I am Ekaterina Smirnova and we are painting Winter Night in the Forest in watercolor. My materials are a couple of brushes. One is a throwaway brush, another one is a fine pointy brush. We will use French ultramarine, olive green, dark green. We will paint on the watercolor paper. Please pick high quality. I have made a little sketch with a pencil. We will need water, a dish to mix colors. And also uh, today we will use some wax and to find a masking tape as well. What I'm going to start with is to take masking tape and cut out a crescent. This is going to be placed right up top on the sky and to make sure that it is really nicely attached to the paper. I'm using a special watercolor masking tape, but you could use a tape that you have, preferably acid-free. Now that I'm going to take just a scrap from a tea candle and place it on top of my fireplace. Once the wax is melted, I'm placing also a heated up rock to keep my wax uh, soft and liquid. And with my bed brush that I don't mind to throw away after, I'm going to make a few reserved areas for the paper to remain white. Generally, in my studio, I use a special masking fluid, but I realize after your comments that not all of you have an access to this material. That's why you could use wax and let's see how it will turn out. I am highlighting few areas that will remain white, the snow areas on the trees. I'm starting to mix my paint, the first uh, two colors I'm using is French ultramarine and the light green color to make something in between, maybe more blue than green. I keep a paper next to me to be able to test the colors before I start painting. And here we go. I am starting to shake my first tree. It is all covered in snow and so when you are painting you will see that there are white areas that you blocked with wax will remain white. We will use wax again to block more areas. It's a good idea to mix uh, different tones, not only use one color because you do not see the same equal color everywhere in the nature. However, this is a monochromatic painting. That means that we will use primarily the same tone, just in a different strengths of it throughout the whole painting. I will also give some texture for the floor, you know, just a hint. Once the paper is fully dry, which is an important part, not to skip. I'm going to reapply heated wax again on the areas around. Now I'm painting on the this blue color that I just used to make an additional tone. If you're not using wax, you could simply paint around the areas that you want to keep white or lighter color but this is much more difficult. So we are using this masking technique. I'm mixing a more intense color of blue, French ultramarine and green again. I took a wider brush that I'm applying water with just on the area of the sky. I'm being quite generous. I want that area to be quite moist so my color will spread softer and easier. I can also uh, remove some additional water if I have too much. 
Once the paper soaked in nicely, I'm going to start painting the sky. It is a darker color than we used before. And you can see that how nice and easy the paint is spreading. Now you can clearly see our crescent that we masked earlier. Also, you can see all of those masked areas on the trees. The forest is now taking shape and becomes more appealing. I'm using darker color for a couple of accents here and there. Once I'm done painting, I'm going to again let the paper dry. It is important not to skip drying time. It is dry now. I'm mixing yet more darker color, combining blue color, French ultramarine, and also dark green color. Uh, choose whichever colors you have. You do not have to follow precisely the same names of the colors because you probably won't be able to find them and so um, now that I am using that darker color to give accents of the further trees, this is really is the most exciting moment because now I'm going to um, give accents on this painting and you can really see what's happening. There are a couple of trees on the far distance I'm using a different tones of blue-green color. Don't just use blue or don't just use green. Mix and match a variety of them throughout your painting. You see I'm constantly adding in more color in my ceramic dish. Now I am moving on to the highlight of this painting, the tree. A fir tree that is the closest to the viewer. From underneath the snow patches I am adding a couple of branches. Some of the needles are sticking out from underneath the snow. Here comes the top of my tree and frankly it is looking quite adorable. Once the paint dry, you can see some areas become flat. So I'm adding deeper colors and a light color for the foreground to give it more texture. Once the paint dried, I'm removing my masking from the moon. And I realized that the crescent ended up too bright and too sharp. So I am adding some yellow color, very light, and smoothing out uh, sharp edges. This is an additional step now. You could use white gouache to get an effect of snow blizzard. But don't overdo it because it is a starry night. You can see the crescent quite nicely. Do not add too much water into the white gouache. Remove it from your brush with a kitchen paper towel. And I'm using a used toothbrush, the most effective material you could use to create snow. Remember, I'm applying the snow on the dried painting. Now my painting is complete. It will work nicely as a Christmas card or a holiday gift. I am separating the dry painting from the album and to remove all the wax I placed the painting in between a few sheets of newspaper and ironed a couple of times until all the wax was gone. Happy winter holidays from my studio to yours.